What's the difference between the MCAT in Canada versus the U.S.? How should this affect my studying? What resources are right for me as a Canadian student? If you're confused about where to start studying for the MCAT as a Canadian student, then you're not alone. Hi everyone, my name is Sophie and I am one of your MedLife Mastery Mentors. I have those exact same questions and I'm here to tell you my key tips and takeaways that I got from taking the MCAT as a Canadian student. The first thing you should know is that the actual MCAT test is the exact same in Canada as it would be in the US. It will also be run through the AAMC, just like it would be in the United States. However, there are some key differences about how Canadian medical schools look at the MCAT in your application. Unlike the 155 medical schools in the United States, there are only 17 medical schools all across Canada. This means that acceptance rates are a bit lower simply because there are fewer seats available. However, this will make it easier for you to go through all of their requirements and decide which schools are right for you. The first thing to note when you're taking the MCAT as a Canadian student is cost. When you register for the MCAT through the AAMC, price that's going to be on their website is in US dollars. A lot of other third-party resources also have their prices in US dollars. I remember when I registered for the MCAT, I was shocked to see a much bigger credit card charge on my bill a few days later because I hadn't accounted for the exchange rate. That was a complete unnecessary panic that I felt. Don't let that happen to you. You don't want to accidentally be spending more than you thought you were and then that not fit into the budget that you were prepared to spend. Make sure it's in US dollars or is it in Canadian dollars? That way you'll know exactly what you're spending when you're spending it and you won't be surprised like I was. The second thing to note is actually about how the MCAT is perceived by Canadian medical schools. A lot of medical schools in Canada actually have minimum score requirements in each section of the MCAT, as opposed to just one overall minimum score like most schools in the US. This means that you really want to take a well-rounded and holistic approach to studying for the MCAT. You don't want to spend hours and hours studying for bio biochem just for you to get your chem phys score back and it's below the minimum requirement for the schools that you're interested in. They can also have minimum score requirements in total. And for some schools like Dalhousie, these change based on your GPA. For example, if you have a higher GPA, your minimum required overall MCAT score will be lower. This is important to know when you are going into the MCAT so that you know what your MCAT score goals should be. I would suggest making a spreadsheet of all of the schools that you're interested in and list all of the minimum score requirements per section, as well as the overall minimum score requirement so you know exactly where you're standing and you can go back and check in on this as you continue to progress in your MCAT journey. If you're interested in hearing more about these tips or just MCAT study strategies in general, you can sign up for our one-on-one -on -one mentoring using the link below. Remember, we've been exactly where you are and we're here to help you. Although you do want to be taking a really holistic and well-rounded approach to the MCAT in Canada, a lot of schools actually put a higher emphasis on the CARS section specifically. And because of that, you might want to put a bit more emphasis on improving that section and learning new strategies to help you with that score. This is particularly important if you're applying to schools out of province. For example, the University of Alberta has a minimum 124 requirement in all of their sections for Albertans, but a minimum 128 in CARS for non-Albertans or Canadians applying outside of Alberta. This is a really big difference when you look at the actual score in the percentile. McMaster University actually takes this one step further and only looks at your CAR score. So in order to be a competitive applicant, you do need to have a really competitive CAR score. I remember when I was taking the MCAT, I kind of thought my CAR section was okay or good enough to apply. So I didn't really worry about improving it that much after a certain point and put cars on the back burner. Unfortunately, I hadn't actually looked at the schools that I was interested in applying to. And when I looked at McMaster and I saw that they required just the car score, I realized I kind of shot myself in the foot and I needed to improve that score quickly. Start setting for cars early. Also, make sure you're looking at different car strategies over time so you can learn what works best for you. Another thing a lot of people consider is what do I do if I don't get the score that I want? Do I retake the test? Do I go with what I got? What's the best course of action? So when you are applying to Canadian medical schools, certain schools will look at different scores on your retakes. So for example, if you've taken the MCAT three times, Queen's University and the University of British Columbia will take your best score of all of your retakes, regardless of if it was the first time you took it or the last time you took it. However, schools like McMaster University and the University of Toronto will actually only take your most recent score. So this is something you should note from the beginning and something you should be prepared for if you do wanna take the MCAT multiple times. So now you take your test, 
you get an amazing score back and you're ready to apply to medical school. You sign into the application, you put in your AEMC ID, and you submit. You think you're ready to go. Unfortunately, you may have missed one crucial step in the Canadian medical school application process. And this is that, unlike in the US, where AMCAS is their central application portal that automatically receives scores from AAMC, Canada doesn't have that. Even though there are some central portals in each province, for example, in Ontario, the central application portal is called OMSAX and is where you'll apply to any Ontario medical school. You still need to submit your scores manually from the AAMC to these portals. I know when I was applying, I was completely stressed out by this. I thought I was gonna make a mistake and mess up my entire application. I was a bit over dramatic in this case. And actually this is just one additional step that can take you less than five minutes to complete. So all you're going to do is sign into your AMC account, go to My Reports, and select Send Scores Electronically. From there, you can look up all of the schools or application portals that you are applying to, select all the ones you're interested in, and hit Send. The AMC will send your scores right to those portals or to those schools, and you won't have to worry about it anymore. I know it can feel very overwhelming hearing all of these tips and tricks early on, or maybe you're later in your studying journey and you feel like you missed the boat a little bit. Don't worry. I was exactly where you were, and I learned these tips along the way, and I made it to the other side. Take these in and let these make you feel more confident and comfortable going into both your MCAT test and your application process. Thank you so much for watching, and you've got this.